Welcome to SJTV. My name is Jesse. My name is Emily. And my name is Aisha too. Today's Monday, May 24th, 2021. We want to start with a public service announcement about a couple of differences between the news on TV, radio, or newspapers and recommendation news on social media. The difference is that the traditional news does not seem to show us all of the nuisances we need to see, while social media shows us the real footage from citizens. However, we do have to be aware that suggested news on social media are based on biases that social media pl platform use. So when you see the news about bombing of the Afghanistan girls' school, Colombian human rights violations, Palestine-Israel conflict, or even this news show, please remember to wear your critical thinking hat. Wait, what Colombian human rights violation? That's actually a great question. Colombians are protesting President Duque tax reform that ended up increasing even more inequality and scarcity of COVID-19 vaccines, and they are met with police brutality. But what's this new about the Palestine Israel? Well, a brief context of this international conflict is that Palestine and Israel both claim a political part of Jerusalem due to the historical and the religious significance. It's been going on for centuries. The modern conflict is considered to have started with the failure of British policy. In, 19, in 1940s, when Britain promised multiple groups of people the ownership of the land. To maintain allyship with Hashemit Hussein bin Ali and Lord Balfour, following the atrocities of the Holocaust, Britain handed over the land to the United Nations, then they decided this land should be divided between Jewish and Arabs. Multiple wars have occurred since then, but even Eventually, Israel has gained control over the land. Today, these Palestinian territories are under Israel occupation. There's so much more to learn about this issue, especially about the recent ceasefire. But I'll stop here and hand it over to Emily about a tragic school bombing. On May 10, 2021, 147 people were victims in the, bomb in the bombing attack in front of the Syed Shuhara School in Afghanistan. A car bomb was detonated and while students were running in panic, two more bombs exploded. Most of the people hurt were school-aged girls, like many of us. If you hear of a way to help them or any other victims we've mentioned so far, please let us know. The USA Food and Drug Administration announced on Monday, May 10th, that it has extended the emergency authorization of the, the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine to 12 and 15 years old. People starting in the age of 12 received the Pfizer vaccine as early as Wednesday, May 13. Remember, you, you do not need health insurance to get it. To locate your nearest provide for the vaccine, go to vaccinefinder.nyc.gov. In addition, CDC recommended that anyone who is fully vaccinated can now be maskless in most situations, except for crowded indoor situations. This is a huge news. When you get fully vaccinated, you will be mostly carrying a mask, not wearing it. Unfortunately, there is no update on mask wearing in school yet. These days, we are in the final phase of PVATS, and many people are getting stressed by all the work. Some healthy ways to cope with stress and taking care of yourself are doing things that you like, such as talking to other people like counselors, teachers, or close friends. Also, taking a break is helpful for refreshing your mind. Remember that taking care of yourself is super important. And also, grades do not define you. Staying calm and breathe deep. On May 18th, we, the students, held our very first town hall of the students, by the students, and for the students to discuss the meaning of the Derek Chauvin conviction. This first town hall, Tuesday, gave us the time and place to talk about the impacts 
of police brutality on us and how we can deal with it. The next one will be on June 1st to follow up on action items and feedback from the first town hall. Over 120 people joined the town hall and many asked insightful questions that led to moderators' great responses and further discussion. I was also able to observe the town hall debrief among the moderators and they discussed how amazingly they felt to hold such a town hall. And they also discussed other people's feedback and found a way to deal with community members' concerns in the next town hall. Next Monday is May 31st, which is Memorial Day. You might be asking yourself, isn't it Veteran Day the same thing? Actually, Veteran Day is the distinct from Memorial Day. Veteran Day celebrates the service of all USA military veterans, while Memorial Day is honors those who had died while military service. Please keep them in your mind during this public holiday. Speaking of no school, Thursday, June 3rd is what's called Anniversary Day, which celebrates the opening of school in Brooklyn and Queens. The schools will be closed for students. The staff will attend professional development. And speaking of June, with the primary elections coming up in a few weeks, the mayoral race has tightened up. Here to give you a rundown on the candidates and their views on various political and social topics. It's Brian Torres in a four weeks in a four week segment called If You Don't Know. Thanks, Emily. Buckle up, kids. This crash course is going to be faster than your PBAT presentation. Here are the six candidates that we will be exploring throughout the four weeks. Andrew Yang, Diane Morales, Scott Stringer, Eric Adams, Maya Willey, and Catherine Garcia. First off, the Stringer sexual assault allegation. Numerous candidates have called upon Stringer to drop out of the primary due to Gene Kim, a former campaign volunteer for Stringer, has accused him of sexually assaulting and harassing her two decades ago. Stringer has strongly denied any wrongdoing and stated to continue on with this election run. Gene Kim has provided corroboration to Gothamist and called for the state attorney general, Letitia James, to act upon this case. I will give you an update as the story unfolds. Moving on. The topic of this week is defunding the police. Now, first off, let's define what that means. Defunding doesn't necessarily mean we are taking away the police's resources, but instead allocating the money into social programs like housing and education. And who are the candidates that support defunding the police, you might ask? Diane Morales, Maya Willey, and Scott Stringer. They believe in redirecting a substantial share of NYPD operating resources to other city agencies. But Yang, Adams, and Garcia take a more moderate stance. In fact, Yang stated that, quote, Defunding the police is the wrong approach for New York City. Like Adams and Garcia, Yang thinks there should be more police presence. He said, quote, The police are going to be a core way for us to address the issue of public safety that concerns so many New Yorkers. Although the candidates all agreed that there's a near universal acknowledgement that the NYPD needs reform, that a shift in style to community policing is necessary, and that the recent wave of hate crimes and crimes in general is a concern, it is the approach that differs between all of them. Next week, we will explore the next topic, education, so stay tuned for that. I'm Brian Torres, and thanks for joining, and if you didn't know... Thanks, Brian, and here are other events that have been captured at CSSG since our last episodes. Fantastic, I'm so happy.
That's it for season three, episode four. I'm Jesse. I'm Emily. And I'm Aisha too. And, and this, this is SJTV. Thanks for watching. watching.